Hello everyone and welcome to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for online worship. It is a beautiful day that God has given us and we are so glad that you are joining with us. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who's leading worship, again, we're just so excited that you are here. I want to extend a special welcome to anyone who may be joining with us for the very first time. We are so glad that you have chosen Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church to worship with. I hope that you will take a couple of moments to fill out our contact form. The link to that is in the comments. And this is the best way that we can get in connected with you, that we can send you our e-newsletter so that you know about everything that's going on with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We can get to know each other a little bit better. And on that contact form is a place for you to put your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So everyone, please use that contact form today. Now, when we do gather for worship online, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. And when we covenant to participate, that means that we're going to fully participate in this time of worship. This isn't just a random video that you're watching, but we are worshiping together. So we encourage you to pray when it's time to pray, to sing when it's time to sing, to light a candle to help you to focus, to turn off other devices and distractions, and really focus in and participate in all that we're doing in worship today. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means that in all the ways we're together, the way we comment together, the way we may be gathered with some other folks wherever we're uh, engaging in this worship service, that all of that will be a blessing to everyone involved and to our greater community at large. Again, thank you so much for joining with us for worship, and I invite you now to join with us in our time of call to worship. Hi, we're the Dion family. I'm Justine, and this is Curtis, this is Meredith, and Aaron. Please join us in the call to worship. Your line is, praise God always. Let's practice saying that together now. Praise God always. Praise God who show, showers us with love. Praise God always. We know God is with us in the bright and beautiful places. Praise God always. And in the dark times, God protects and guides us. Praise God always. Let us praise God that through all our trials and triumphs, God's love brings us hope and help. Praise, praise God, God always. Please join me in singing praise to the Lord the Almighty. and I'm a member of United Methodist Douglas Church and I would like for you to join me in a spirit of prayer as I pray aloud our opening prayer. Everlasting God, you give strength to the powerless and power to the faint. You raise up the sick and cast out the powers of evil. 
open our hearts to hear you, believe you, and trust you. Make us agents of your healing and hope, wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Amen. Please join me in sharing the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, with me, and with these people in our church community. Peace be with you. We're Stan and Kim Edge. I'm on the Finance Committee. And I'm Chairman of the Foundation Board. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. And also with you. Hi, I'm Dennis Fry, and this is Elizabeth Fry, and we're members of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. And also with you. I'm Rosemarie Stolding. I am blessed to belong to two circles in the uh, Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And peace be with you. You know what time it is. It's time for Small Talk. I want to encourage all of the children who are joining with us in online worship to get in really close to your screen or your device to make sure that you can see everything that's going on with Small Talk. This special time is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her assistant, Laud the Lamb. So let's get ready for Small Talk. Hello everybody, it is Miss Lori and Laud, and Laud is exhausted. He is so tired. Can you see why he might be tired? Yes, Laud just finished his very first tackle football game ever. Isn't that right, Laud? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he hasn't even gotten his helmet off and things. He's just really tired and he doesn't know what to do other than just rest. Hmm. So what do we do when we're really, really tired? We're like exhausted. I bet you have been when you've maybe been playing or been running or doing some work, helping mom and dad or another grown up, and you just get really tired. You think, I just can't do this anymore. Guess who can help you? God. God promises he will give us the strength to just keep going. Something else that might be making us a little bit tired right now, especially as you're getting ready to go back to school, are these. Mm -hmm. This isn't going to fit very well with his football helmet. But our schools have asked us to wear masks again, whether you've been vaccinated or not. And that might be making you tired, a different kind of tired. Okay, kind of tired in your in your in your brain, in your heart. But you know what? We can do it and we can rely on God to give us the strength to just keep going, to keep ourselves safe and to keep others safe. So remember, when you get really, really tired, look to God to help you. He will lift you up and give you the strength to just keep on going. So thanks for listening, everybody. Lod's gonna go get some rest now. Mm -hmm. Maybe some Gatorade, that helps too. All right, bye, have a great day. Miss you. Please join us in On Eagle's Wings. Thank you. 
Hello, I'm Gabe Woodruff. And I'm Juliet. And uh, today's Bible reading is Isaiah chapter 40, verses 27 through 31. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. Why do you say, Jacob, and declare, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my God ignores my predicament? Don't you know? Haven't you heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He doesn't grow tired or weary. His understanding is beyond human reach, giving power to the tired and reviving the exhausted. Youths will become tired and weary, young men will certainly stumble, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will fly up on wings like eagles, they will run and not be tired, they will walk and not be weary. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading that we've received today. Amen. Throughout the summer, we've been sharing together stories to live by from our Bible. Some of our very favorite stories and verses from the Bible that are particularly meaningful are helpful for the various preachers that are joining with us in our worship series. Today, we are excited to have Alan Griffey bring our message. Alan is a longtime member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. He loves music, sings in our praise band, and is a regular in our online worship music. Alan has served as the chair of our administrative council. He currently co-chairs our welcome and inclusion team and is one of our lay members to annual conference of the Illinois Great Rivers Conference of the United Methodist Church. For his day job, Alan works as the supervisor of the healthcare registry, registry of the Illinois Department of Public Health, helping take care of each and every one of us. He has inherited an impressive collection of Lego bricks, though he downplays his Lego building skills. He is an expert at exploding kittens and unstable unicorns. Those are card games, by the way. So thanks to Alan for bringing our message today. I want to thank Pastor Meredith for giving me the opportunity to preach during this summer series of Stories to Live By. I want to bring a message to you today from my all-time favorite Bible verse, Isaiah 40, 31. But first, can you name the character I'm thinking of? I'll give you some clues. He's pink, he wears sunglasses and flip-flops, and he pl plays a bass drum nonstop. If you guessed the Energizer Bunny, you're right. Now, we've all seen his commercials. He's the bunny who keeps going and going and going. Energizer claims to be the longest lasting batteries on the market. According to them, if you use their batteries, your toys and electronic devices will almost never run out of power. Wouldn't it be great if our spiritual lives were powered by Energizer batteries, no matter what happened to us, trials, heartaches, setbacks, we could just keep going. Unfortunately, life has a way of wearing us down, depleting our energy, and making us tired in our very souls. So how can we be re-energized when our spiritual batteries are low? Well, the passage from Isaiah gives us some answers to the questions of why, who, and how. But first, will you pray with me, please? Gracious God, help me to share the message you have laid on my heart in a way that will help others renew their strength. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Okay, so I said we're gonna answer questions of how, why, who, and how. Why does our strength falter? Well, I think sometimes our strength falters because of what I call strength-depleting events. These are everyday situations that just cause us to feel overwhelmed. They leave us exhausted, spiritually exhausted, emotionally exhausted, and sometimes physically exhausted. They make us feel powerless. Unlike the Energizer Bunny, who has power all the time, we feel like we need extra power because we're powerless. Some examples of these are medical problems, the death of a loved one, divorce or relationship problems, unemployment, or sometimes even a new job or just daily job pressures, financial troubles, and then sometimes just everyday life, sometimes just everyday burnout. So that's why our strength falters. Next, we wanna look at who, 
who renews our strength. And that can be found in Isaiah 40, 31. This has been my favorite Bible verse for most of my adult life. I honestly don't remember the first time I found this particular verse, but I've, been, I've loved it ever since. It's been my favorite. We heard it read earlier from the CEB, the Common English Bible, um, which is, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will fly up on wings like eagles. They will run and not be tired, and they will walk and not be faint. But I actually learned it, and I have it memorized from the New Revised Standard Version, which is, but those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. So those two verses, two different versions are very similar. The key difference seems to be the, the verbs there, those who hope in the Lord versus those who wait for the Lord. And those sound like passive verbs. But I found, after studying this passage a number of times, that hope and wait in this, in this verse are actually action verbs. We don't just sit around hoping for God to act or waiting for God to act. We get to actively participate in God's renewing energy. And I also found that the verses immediately leading up to Isaiah 40, 31 are just as important. As I said, Isaiah 40, 31 has been my favorite passage for decades. About 20 years ago, I was reading it, though, and I looked at the verses immediately preceding it. Uh, and that's why we read from 27 through 31 today. I'm going to read it again. This is, again, from the CEB, the Common English Bible, because I like some of the language here. Why do you say, Jacob, and declare Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my God ignores my predicament? Don't you know? Haven't you heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He doesn't grow tired or weary. His understanding is beyond human reach, giving power to the tired and reviving the exhausted. Youths will become tired and weary. Young men will certainly stumble. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will fly up on wings like eagles. They will run and not be tired, and they will walk and not be weary. So I found that these other verses here really lead up to this promise of renewed energy in verse 31. This passage starts out uh, by the Israelite people, who are personified here as Jacob and Israel, asking, why is God ignoring us? We're, we're having all this difficulty. Why is God ignoring us? But the author goes on to say, don't you know? God is everlasting. God is creator. God is beyond all our understanding. So God does know about your predicament, but God does know the trouble you're having. God gives power to the tired, and he revives the exhausted. The passage then says that even youths are going to become weary at some point. And then the promise is in verse 31, promise to renew our strength. So after studying this passage for a number of years, I've come up with what I think the, the key points of this passage, what the meaning of this passage um, is. The first thing is, it's okay to question God. Here, Jacob, Israel, is asking, why? Why, God? Why aren't you doing something? It's also okay to feel depleted and worn out. I mean, even young men are going to feel exhausted at some point. So it's okay to, to feel that way. It's okay to tell God how exhausted you are. But the key thing to remember is that God is in control. God revives us when we need it most. That's not always when we think we need it most, but God knows the exact time when we need renewing and we need, we need recharging, and he revives us when we need it most. The key thing is to trust in the promise, the promise of Isaiah 40, 31, that God will renew our strength. So now we've answered why and who. Now the last question is how. How do we regain our strength? Well, I found that the first way that we regain our strength is through prayer. Earlier I said that hope and wait are active verbs and that we actively participate in God's renewing strength. 
prayer is what we're doing while we're actively hoping or waiting. During our prayer time, we lay out all of our questions, all of our fears, all of our weakness to God. We can ask God for strength. And then a key part of the prayer is to listen for God's answers. We sometimes skip over that part, but we need to take the time to listen for God's answers. God doesn't always answer when we expect God to or in quite the way we expect God to, but we need to take the time to listen for God's answers. A second way we can regain our strength is through studying the Bible. Reciting fable, favorite Bible verses is a good way to start with that. Uh, as I said, you know, Isaiah 40, 31 has been my favorite for, for years. I have found sometimes that that can even be a prayer to recite a favorite Bible verse. A few years ago, I was having a minor medical procedure, and I knew there was, the outcome was going to be positive, and I knew it wasn't a very risky procedure, but still, when they're wheeling you down to the OR, it's a little frightening. And I wanted to pray to God, ask for strength. I wanted to ask for courage to get through it and just peace. And I couldn't find the words to do that. So I just found myself repeating over and over Isaiah 40, 31. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. So sometimes just knowing a favorite Bible verse, especially having one or two memorized, just, just saying that can help you uh, regain your strength. As you study a Bible verse or a Bible passage, look for God's promises. God's promises are throughout the entire Bible. Just look for the promises that are in the, the verses you're looking at. And finally, ask God for understanding. Sometimes we read a passage and it doesn't make sense. Ask God to help you understand it. And then the third way we can regain our strength is to simply believe in the promise of renewed strength. Just like the passage here in Isaiah says, remember God's all-encompassing power. Then once you do that, you, you can remember that God does know what's going on in your life. Does, God does care about you. Then rest in the comfort of God's abiding love. Sometimes the best way to recharge physically is to take a rest. Sometimes the best way to recharge spiritually is to rest in God's abiding love. And then finally, we have to actually allow God to refresh us and recharge us. Sometimes we ask for renewing, ask for recharging, but don't actually wait around and let God do that to, in our lives. So I hope you have learned something today about how God can renew, re-energize, and recharge us when our spiritual lives, our spiritual batteries, if you will, are depleted. By actively hoping in and waiting for God, we know that we can find the renewal we need. Unlike the Energizer Bunny, we don't always keep going and going. Sometimes we run out of power. But God promises to renew our strength. God doesn't give us Energizer batteries that, despite what their commercials might imply, are eventually completely drained and useless. Instead, God gives us something much better. God gives us a way to recharge over and over again. Amen. Please join us in singing one of Alan Griffey's favorite songs, Everlasting God. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God.
I'm Nancy Vereen, lay leader at Douglas Avenue. Let us go together in prayer. Dear God, Almighty Father, we come today to give you thanks for all of the blessings that you have given us. You give strength to the weary and you give power to the weak. You raise us up on eagles' wings, bear us on the breath of dawn, and make us to shine like the sun as you hold us in the palm of your hands. Knowing that you care for us in so many ways, we give thanks for an extremely successful Camp Compass that was completed last week. Be with all of the students and their families, the teachers, the staff, and the volunteers that came. We ask that you be with all of the students and teachers as they head back to school. And we ask that you especially watch over those going to college or those who are making other transitions. We pray that you will place your healing hand on those that are sick or struggling with addiction. You know their individual needs. Be with those that have COVID and the medical staff that are treating them. Help us as a nation to take the correct steps to get this virus and its mutations under control. Be present in our in-person gatherings, our workplaces, our classrooms, and among our friendships. Give comfort to those that are grieving. Be with our world, our state, our nation, and our local community. Be with us as Douglas Avenue as we seek to carry out your work and your word. We have lifted many concerns to you today, but there are many individual prayers. Let us take a minute to lift them silently. Would you join in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much for the, all the ways that you are generous with who you are, with your offerings of finances, with everything that you are with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Your generosity in your financial giving and in the giving of your time and your resources makes a huge difference in the ministries that we are able to offer with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. From our online ministries to our in-person ministries to the way that we're able to support the community in so many life-changing ways. So thank you. you can can give of your financial resources using our online giving portal. The link to that is in the comment section. You should just click on that. You can also get there from our web page. You can give by setting up automatic giving with our financial institution or with yours. If you need help with that, just let us know in the church office and we'd be happy to help you. And of course, you can send in your checks to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Part of your generosity is participating in the ministries of Douglas Avenue. And I just want to lift up a couple of opportunities for you that are coming up soon. One is that our Compass for Kids program is looking for volunteers. 
During the school year, Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church oversees one of the Club Compass after school programs. If you are interested in helping in the classroom and making a difference in the lives of underserved kids in our community, please contact us in the church office or go to the Compass website, www.compass4kids.org and click on Get Involved. Our next session of Vital Conversations on Race is set for Monday, August 23rd at 6.30. This online group will meet as a roundtable discussion, reviewing and planning for the future. Contact Joe Johnson or the church office for links or for more information. And then I'd love for you to mark your calendars now for our upcoming community back to school bash set for Sunday, August 29th from 3 to 5 p.m. in the parking lot of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We'll meet outside and celebrate the beginning of a new school year with people of all ages uh, with games and crafts and music and snacks and everyone is welcome. So we hope that you will join with us. Again, thank you for joining with us in online worship, and we encourage you to continue to do that as a part of your offering, or to join with us in person for worship on Sundays at 11 a.m. in our sanctuary. Please join with us in singing, May You Run and Not Be Weary. Thank you so much for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We just pray this whole experience has been uplifting and meaningful for you, that you will continue to join with us in online worship, or that you'll join with us for worship on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. in the sanctuary. You are welcome. We would love to connect with you, to pray with you, to be a part of your life of faith and growing in your love and service of Jesus Christ. So please use that contact form. Remember, again, there's a place there for you to put your prayer requests that go straight to our our pastors and to our prayer team and we just encourage you to do that because we'd love to get to know you better and be a part of your life in that way and now as you go into your day go knowing that God loves you that Jesus Christ supports you that the Holy Spirit has you to renew your strength go in peace to love and serve your God amen mm -hmm.